I reached out to Laura Moseni, general manager of River Bench Vineyard and Winery, because, well, you know me, I'm a sparkling wine addict. I just absolutely adore the most festive wine and the world has natural bubbles to it. And the winery did some experimentation and now we are the beneficiaries of a Chardonnay based Blanc de Blanc and a Rosé Blanc de Noir and a Demi Sec. And River Bench Vineyard and Winery is located in Santa Maria. They started out with, of course, Pinot Noir Chardonnay. But in my pursuit of requesting an interview and us going back and forth, I've come to realize that, my gosh, she's a Carolina girl. And so you'll have fun listening to her talk about that. But uh, Laura, I don't catch any drawl in your voice. Well, one glass of bubbles and it definitely comes back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so what did you study in college and why did you make that transition to move out to Santa Barbara County in 2004? I literally followed the wine here. I, um, I grew up in a, a wine family. My dad is a beer and wine importer actually in Greensboro, North Carolina. And oh. um, so, yes, it's all in the family. I came out here to learn more about the wine industry at the source and just fell in love with the area and its beautiful scenery and delicious wines. And now it's been about eight years, and I, I don't have any plans to go back just yet. In college, were you a business major? What were you studying? I actually did international studies and romance languages. Um, okay. So I can pronounce the different grapes, but I... Other than that, don't use it too often here at Riverbench, although um, my for three years of, of college, I did meteorology. and um, <gasps> Oh, my gosh. Did you do any? <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> did you do any interning at local TV station or something? Um, I did back in Charleston for a summer, and I, okay. I worked with a lot of the folks at NC State in their amazing program there. But I, um, I did just some basic internships with the professors through Chapel Hill and State and um, not as much the news news type of research, but more more technical, especially with large storms, hurricanes, you know, all that thing, the, the types of storms you guys are so familiar with out there. Oh, so. yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. But And you don't have to worry about that kind of storm phenomenon over there at, in Santa Maria, but maybe do you have to deal with earthquakes every once in a while? I was, uh, there was a very small earthquake when I first moved out here. That was my first one. But knock on wood, I haven't had any other experiences with that just yet. Okay, okay, that's good, (laughs) that's good. Well, okay, so let's go back to talking about sparkling wines, which is, I'm just dying to hear all about this. And uh, and, uh, now, I I didn't go on the website for a couple of days, but when I went a couple days ago, I didn't see them posted for sale. The ones you tasted are brand new sparkling wines. So we started by experimenting with sparkling wine, the first one we made is the Blanc de Blanc, which is Chardonnay-based. And you will find that one on the website. It's the Cork Jumper Blanc de Blanc, the 2009 vintage. Okay. And you also tried our new Demi Sec, which is just a tiny bit of residual sugar. It's a great aperitif wine, or even with a cheese tray or dessert, it's just delicious. And this uh, 2010 vintage is the first time we've made that, and those will be released this fall officially, but um, it occurred, that, that along with the rosé. It occurred to me that it would also go well with spicy foods. Definitely. I think it would be delicious with some, some nice, especially Thai with really clean flavors, a little bit of kick to it. Exa- oh, exactly, exactly. Wow. Okay. And now, uh, uh, do you have a lot of these wines available, or are they in pretty limited production that people need to put their orders in early for the wines, even maybe even before they're released? They're definitely very limited production, especially the rosé. Um, well, the Demi Sec is probably the smallest one we made. That's less than 100 cases. So, They go very quickly, and we have a a sparkling wine club, and we do take orders and ship to most states, um, definitely to North Carolina, close to home. Okay, Uh, sparkling wine club, okay. So it's just specifically sparkling wine club, not it does it's separate from the still wine club. Exactly. So if you're a big Bubbles fan like you and me, then you can get just sparkling wines all year. Okay, talk to us about the fact that you are, that the winery is SIP certified. 
Well, this was a big deal for us. So we um, we have a relatively large vineyard. It's about 350 acres total. And we sell most of our fruit to other winemakers, but wanted to, since we're such a small family business, uh, Riverbench is owned by four local families. They've been in the area for generations. And the idea is to pass the winery down to their kids someday and just keep it a family business. So um, very active in the community and try to take care of natural resources and do our business sustainably. So the certification really was attractive to us, more so than just an organic certification. But sustainability tends to encompass so many more things than than just the environment. It considers your people, it considers your your staff, and then, of course, how you use natural resources and what kind of chemicals you use on your property. So not only did we do the EPA audits and things like that, and we, we've eliminated herbicides, pesticides, that kind of thing um, that aren't natural and organic, but uh, we also, like I said, very active in the community, and, and the whole idea of sustainability is so important to us. So that certification, it took a long time to get, and it's a very intense process, but now that we have it, we're just so proud of it. Wow. I, I've done a couple of interviews uh, with uh, the people that uh, are, are in charge of SIP, and I think it's just a fantastic program. And it's prob- it's almost serves as a model for other areas as well that are looking to create the same sort of organization. I think so. And, and SIP is a like you said, it's a great program with really amazing people behind it, very intelligent, very conscious people. So it's it's a good group to be involved with. Laura, how did you make the connection to with the four families to be, you know, this must be a really cool job for you at, the, at Riverbench, at general manager and small family-owned business uh, and so hands-on for you? Definitely. I mean, I, as I mentioned, I grew up in a family business that, you know, my father and his partners started their company um, way back when, and, and that always was so attractive to me. So when I stumbled on these guys and it, it worked out, they're such amazing people, so generous and hardworking, and I, I love it. I can't imagine ever leaving Riverbench. It's a wonderful, wonderful place. So what kind of a drive do you have from home to the winery? I'm almost embarrassed to say it's so easy. It's a little five to ten minute drive straight through vineyards and some of the most gorgeous parts of Santa Barbara County. So, <laughs> whoa! And the, and because I remember you when an email saying that there was really the cell phone reception at the winery was a problem. Yes, we're definitely out in the boonies a little bit, but it's it's gorgeous. My office looks out over just acres and acres of vineyard, and we're in a valley, so you have mountains on either side and. It truly is one of the most remarkable parts of the country, I think. Can people come and visit Riverbench Vineyard and Winery, or is it not open to the public? We are open to the public. We have a little tasting room that we opened here four years ago, and it's right on the vineyard property. So okay. uh, you're you're surrounded, like I said. My little office is about 20 feet from the bar. So it's uh, it's all just in the middle, plopped down right in the middle of the vineyard, and it's, it's just beautiful. And what kind of distribution do you have nationally, or or is it really the since it's a small, relatively small business, is the majority of it sold through the wine clubs and, and online? Most of it is sold through the tasting room okay. and um, and online. But we we're in nine states, and we are in North Carolina. My dad, okay. uh, through his company Freedom Beverage, distributes Riverbench, so okay. that's exciting. So yes, you can definitely find us out where you are. Whoa. Okay. Does Freedom Beverage, well, you probably don't know, but if, if they deliver out to the coast? Oh, yes. They cover the whole state. Okay. But, wow. F- this is fantastic. I will yeah. definitely. Oh, so a lot of people listening here are, I'm recording in Moorhead City, and it's always fun to be supporting uh, the full circle of Carolina, Carolina. Definitely. And and your background is, or I understand that you are particularly, um passionate about wine and food pairing what is what did you have on july 4th if i could ask did you have anything special we did um i (laughs) we i had some cheese we did a wine and cheese pairing out here with our bubbles actually just a weekend ago so i had some leftover it's this little french uh goat cheese from the loire valley called crotin de champignol and I made gnocchi out of that, and it was just delicious. So we had that <gasps> with lamb chops. 
<laughs> oh, oh, wow. So good. And, and very good with a bottle of rosé bubbles, I have to say. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And were the lamb chops cooked on the grill, did you say? Yes, my husband's the griller. I'm, I'm better at just marinating and passing things along to him. So, yeah. Whoa. Oh, that's such a good idea. We love to cook. And eating and drinking, <laughs> especially when you, you hit those pairings, and, and it just is like a party in your mouth. It's so much fun. So do you do any travel around the state of California or elsewhere where you participate in, you know, events that are where you're, taste, where you're pouring wines? Definitely. Actually, I, um, my job is to work with our distributors all over the country. So even though we're only in nine states, I often am traveling around and doing dinners or tastings, um, that sort of thing. But we do several throughout California and um, lots of different wine and food pairing events actually on site here at Riverbench. We have um, a wine and food pairing series that we do a couple of times a year, and it's almost like a mini food and wine pairing class where you get to taste a wine with a small bite, so it's it's a lot of fun. And we should say that the and the winemaker is Clarissa. Is it Nagy or Nagy? Nagy. Nagy. Uh, Hungarian last name. <laughs> oh wow. Okay. And the vineyard manager is Jim Stolberg. Yes. Both amazing people. We thank you so very much for joining us today on Wine and Dine to talk about the new sparkling wines at Riverbench Vineyard and Winery. <laughs>